Lately, we've been talking a lot about the adjustment brush inside of Lightroom, and today I want to continue that conversation with one more tip that I think you'll really, really like. And this one is something that I don't use a lot, but every once in a while it does come in handy and it can make for a really dramatic effect. And basically what I'm trying to do in a photograph is create this sort of ambiance or this kind of candlelight or atmosphere look to the, to the photograph. And it doesn't matter whether you can see the sun or not see the sun. It really doesn't matter if it's a landscape or a portrait. This trick will work with any of those things. You just have to use a little bit of imagination, but I'm going to show you a few different ways or a few different photographs that you can use this trick and then you can take it and run with it as you will so let's jump into Lightroom and show you exactly what it is I'm talking about so for starters I think I'm gonna begin with what would probably be the easiest photograph and the one that's most obvious because in this photograph I actually do have a light source there is a sunburst in the top of the photograph and whenever you have a uh, uh, an image where you know where the sun is actually coming from, whether there's a burst or you can just see the sun peeking up over a mountain or you know that it was in the corner of a photograph or something like that, this trick becomes a little bit easier. So we're going to start with this one and it's really simple. The first thing you want to do is make your photograph small. So um, I'm going to go to maybe about one eighth uh, you, you know, if you need to make the image smaller, you can definitely do that. Then we're going to jump into our adjustment brush. And the idea of this trick is to make your brush really large. So that way it makes for a really nice, soft light. Uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure that your feathering is all the way up to 100%. And you want to make sure that the auto mask feature is actually turned off on this trick. So once you have dialed in those settings, if you're curious, you can play with flow or play with density. That's really uh, up to you. Um, the ones that are most important is the size of the brush and the feathering on the brush. So I'm going to start with a really large brush and I'm going to just put my little center of the adjustment brush right where the sunburst is. And I'm going to just click one time and that's going to apply uh, the adjustment. If I turn the show selected overlay mask button on, you can do that by hitting the letter O. You'll see that pretty much the entire photograph is going to be affected here, but we can control kind of how much that effect is or isn't. So let's turn that uh, overlay off. And here's where the magic happens. What we're going to do is we're going to start by lifting up our exposure a little bit. And just by doing this, you can start to see that glow happen. Another thing that I want to do is introduce a little bit of color to this. So I'm going to go up to temperature and I'm going to pull that up and warm this up. It's optional whether or not you want to apply tint or uh, for some green or red effect. You can kind of play with that and see what you like. Since there's a lot of greenery in here, I will add a little bit of, uh, of green tint to this glow. And the other thing that I, that I typically like to do is I like to go to the dehay slider. Now, usually you find people going into the plus um, to remove haze, but I'm actually going to go towards the minus to introduce haze. Because if you've ever looked at sunlight, especially when it's coming through trees or things like that, the light actually creates this sort of atmosphere because of the particles or dust in the air. The more light there is, the more atmosphere there is. And we can intensify that to add even more uh, ambiance to the photograph. So I'm going to go and maybe just add about a negative, you know, two, three. You don't really need a lot. I'd probably say no more than negative five is plenty. Once you've created these settings, we can go to the opacity by holding down our Alt or Option key, hovering over the pin and dialing this back a little bit. If you don't know how to do this or you need a little bit more, we've created a video on how you can control the opacity of your adjustment. But we're going to do it here just by holding the Alt or Option, dragging left or right, and you can see how that really um, gives us control uh, as to how much of this ambiance do we really want. And if I just toggle this adjustment on and off, 
you can see what a nice glow that adds to the photograph. And you can, you know, play with the settings and dial this into perfection. But this is the trick. And you can apply this to a number of photographs. So let me show you how this works when you have a photo where there isn't a sunburst. So here I've got this road and at the back of the road, I want there to appear as though there's some ambiance or some glow happening in this photograph. I'm going to just make my brush slightly a little bit smaller and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to put my cursor where I want the radius of this uh, glow to begin. And I'm going to just click one time on the photograph. And from here I can go and dial in my exposure. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull the exposure up. I'm going to add some temperature to warm that up. Maybe even add a little bit of green to this and then uh, reduce the uh, haze to add a little bit more uh, glow or atmosphere there. I could also, you know, add a little clarity or anything else that I feel is necessary. But here's a quick before and after of what that looks like in this photograph here. Really nice. I, I like I like how it adds that light. And as a last tip, I can always go and dial down the opacity so that it looks a little bit more natural. And even with this being nice and soft, if I toggle this adjustment on and off, you can see how effective this trick really is. One last one since we're on it. We're going to go to another photograph. I know that the light source was coming up over the mountains. You can see here in the very, very back, this was a sunrise. You can see that glow starting to happen right behind the mountains back here. So on this one, though, I'm going to make the brush size a little bit smaller because I don't want the glow to be so dramatic. I just want a little kiss of light happening right here where the mountains kind of meet and merge right there at that center point. So I'm going to go up here and click one time and then I will dial in my exposure. So we'll pull the exposure up. That looks pretty good. Maybe add just a little bit of warmth. I'm not going to do anything with the tint on this one, but I will dial back the haze just for a little bit more of atmosphere. And then I'll go into my uh, opacity and I'll just dial this back just a little bit. So here's a quick before and after of that adjustment. And like I said, you could use this on portraits as well. So I don't have a portrait here, but I do have a picture of this bobcat and I could do the same thing. I could make a really big brush and this is just for creative effect. This isn't really uh, for anything other than just adding some kind of mood or drama to this portrait. Um, and again, I'll pull the haze back and reduce the opacity just a little bit. And there you have it. So if we do a quick before and after, another thing is that you can always reposition this uh, this brush. So if you feel like it's not in the perfect spot, you can just click on the pin and kind of move it around. And as I do, you can see how the effect begins to change. So if you don't feel like you clicked in the right spot, don't freak out. You can just click on the pin and move it around and get it right into the place you want. The one thing you can't do is you can't expand or or make the brush larger after the fact. So if you wanted to make a brush bigger, if you decided that you needed it larger and softer, I would just delete the pen and then expand it um, to the desired size. In Photoshop, you have more flexibility with that kind of stuff, but in the sense of making this as easy as possible, we're just doing it in Lightroom. If you're curious to see um, how this works inside of Photoshop and the other creative uh, options that you have for using this trick in Photoshop, Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to show you this trick uh, in that platform. But in the meantime, have fun creating some candlelight and some mood. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel where we'll have a lot more content coming to you soon. As always, thank you so much for your support. And we'll catch you in the next episode. My name is Adam. This is Photo Nerds University. I'm out.